a scientist on the brink of a fantastic discovery. I just can't focus. Journeys into the field of the unknown. This machine should double my brain power. And ends up out of his depth. An odyssey your eyes won't believe. It came from the depths of field, presented in Edmund Vision. Hello everyone, I'm Chris, a machine vision sales engineer here at Edmund Optics, and this is Bite Sized, a quick, snappy, and digestible way to learn about imaging concepts. Today, we'll be exploring F number, what it is, how to use it, and how it affects your imaging system. So what is F number? Mathematically, F number is a ratio of the lens focal length and the effective aperture diameter. Here we have the common F number values and the respective area for a 25 mm lens. As the F stops increase, the effective aperture diameter decreases by a factor of root 2, meaning each step will have the aperture area and the amount of light throughput. That's just geometry. But we aren't here to talk about geometry. We're here to learn how F number influences our image. As we drive our F number up, we'll see the following. Our diffraction limit, which is our theoretical max for resolution, will decrease along with our light throughput, requiring a longer exposure, while our depth of field will increase. You'd expect this increase in F number, which will drive our theoretical resolution maximum down, to drive our actual performance down. But that's not always the case. Peak lens performance is typically between f2.8 and 5.6. From a fully open lens, increasing the f number normally drives its performance up, but at some point, the laws of physics step in and we start being pushed down by the diffraction limit. But don't just take my Our word for it. Let's pop over the lab to see this phenomenon in action. Welcome to the lab. Come take a look at this experiment I set up. Here we have three test targets at varying distances from our camera. Our plane of focus, five centimeters, and 10 centimeters beyond the plane of focus. Using these targets, we can loosely estimate the resolution of our system. Currently, our lens is set to f2, giving us minimal depth of field. And we can't really see past our first target, at least not until we close our aperture and collect some data. Before we dig into our data, let's discuss what we looked at during our experiment and how it helps us understand our system's resolution. First, we'll take a closer look at our 1951 USAF target. It consists of a series of horizontal and vertical bars that incrementally spiral and shrink in size. Each group of horizontal and vertical bars are given a group number and element. These are essentially the coordinates. You can see the smallest set of bars we can adequately resolve on the chart on the left, which is what I recorded during our experiment. We can use the below equation to convert these coordinates into a physical resolution value in micrometers. So a smaller number indicates a higher resolution for our imaging system. And this resolution is the smallest possible feature we could resolve in object space. We can see as we increase our F number, our resolution also increased at all three positions. However, this trend won't last forever. As we reach our physical limitation of resolution, or diffraction limit, our resolution begins to decrease. And with each subsequent stop, that limit continues to drop. But what does this change in resolution really look like? Here we have a series of star target images. Star targets are another type of resolution target that we use that show a linearly increasing resolution as you move from the edge to the center of each star. For these, we zoomed in on our most central star to see the impact changing our F number has on resolution. These images are at various aperture positions. The first few stops working in our favor, driving our resolution up, until we hit the, the diffraction, diffraction limit. limit. And it begins to decrease. Eureka! Our visuals and data align. But Chris, what about our light throughput? Way ahead of you, cadets. 
I've already collected the exposure values for each aperture stop. Remember, since each stop halves our light, the time needed to acquire the image must double. Now that we understand aperture, how do we use it? If your application does not have a depth of field requirement, I would likely recommend running this lens at around f4. This will get you the best performance possible. However, if your application is in a light-starved environment, open it up. And if you need a deeper depth of field, stop it down. Remember, be conscious to not go further in either direction than your application demands, or you could be doing more harm than good. If you're unsure of your lens's optimal F number, reach out to us. We have engineers available 24-7 to answer all your imaging lens needs. Thanks, cadets, for traversing the optical space with me today. If you have any questions, concerns, or would like to learn more, visit us at edmondoptics.com. I'm Chris Razzi, and this has been Bite Sized.